Today I want to talk about this really surprising result where you have this number that looks really, really irrational, but actually ends up being not just rational, but an integer. And the question is why, and how can we figure this out? So there are a lot of cool ways to look at this, um, and what we're going to do is start by labeling parts of this expression in a way that will make clear how to at least proceed with trying to figure out what this mysterious looking number actually is. Um, so one of the things we're going to use and exploit is the fact that if you graph the function y equals x cubed, um, it's one to one on the entire real plane. Uh, so if you have a particular value that is assigned to what's inside of the cube root, let's call it u cubed, then there's a unique real number u so that u cubed is that expression. So we'll let v cubed be the other expression. Uh, and then our goal then is to figure out what the real number u minus v is. And there's a unique u so that u cubed is that expression 10 plus the square root of 108. There's a unique v so that v cubed is the square root of 108 minus 10. Okay, uh, so if we add these two expressions, u cubed plus v cubed, we'll get two copies of the square root of 108. Uh, and then uh, we can do a similar thing with taking their difference and writing that expression down. And then maybe if we use the sum of u cubed and v cubed and the difference of u cubed and v cubed, we'll be able to figure something out. So u cubed minus v cubed then is 10 minus negative 10, which is 20. Okay, so using these two, maybe there's a way to figure out what u minus v is. Um, well, let's play around with this a little bit and see if we can get another expression involving u and v. So we're gonna square u cubed plus v cubed. If we do that, we get u to the six plus two u cubed v cubed plus v to the six. Um, and then that's gonna give us 432. That's the square root of two times the square root of 108. Squaring the, the bottom expression, we get u to the six minus two u cubed v cubed plus v to the sixth is 400. Okay, so actually we can use these then because we have a u to the six and a v to the six in both expressions. We can use these to figure out what u cubed v cubed is and then subsequently what uv is. So if we subtract, we get four copies of u cubed v cubed, v cubed has to be 32. And so u cubed v cubed is eight. Um, and then again, taking the cube roots of both sides will tell us then that uv itself is two. So cool, we know the product of u and v from these two expressions. Let's write that down and keep that at our um, disposal. All right, so now the goal is to figure out again what u minus v is and we have some expressions involving u and v. One thing we could do is write u in terms of v or v in terms of u and then make a substitution in any one of the two expressions we have involving u cubed and v cubed above. Um, so we'll use the second one. So u cubed minus v cubed is 20. And so then that tells us that uh, u cubed minus uh, 2 over u all cubed is 20. Um, okay, so then u cubed minus 8 over u cubed is 20, and then multiplying by u cubed, we'll get a quadratic in u cubed itself. It's u to the 6 minus 20 u cubed minus 8 is 0. Right, and then we can be even more explicit about how that's a quadratic in u cubed. Now, if we write this quadratic down, we could solve for what u cubed is, but then that would essentially give us the expression we already have for u cubed. And that doesn't help us actually find out what u is to figure out what u minus v is, knowing or giving that hint in the beginning of the video that it's actually an integer. So we're gonna do something else. There has to be some other way to figure out what u minus v is without going through this process. So let's erase what we have and take a look at this really, really interesting way to figure this out. So we're gonna let x be this quantity that we're hoping for, u minus v. We're gonna start by cubing x. So that's the quantity u minus v all cubed. Okay, if we cube that by dis distributive property multiple times or using binomial theorem, we get u cubed minus three u squared v plus three uv squared minus v cubed. Now we have some pieces of the expression here already 
um, given to us. So u cubed minus v cubed, for example, um, is 20. So we can use that to our advantage. So we'll clump that u cubed minus v cubed together and then look at the rest of the expression and hopefully we have information to figure out what the rest of that expression is, um, maybe in terms of x and in terms of some of the data we're given. So we have u cubed minus v cubed, that's 20, and then what we're left with, it, left with has a common factor of negative 3uv, and then the rest is u minus v, which happens to be x itself. All right, so u cubed minus v cubed is 20, and then uv itself is 2. We figured that out earlier. Uh, so, and then u minus v is x. So what we have here then is this value x, which is u minus v, is actually a solution to a cubic equation. It's the cubic equation x cubed plus 6x minus 20 is 0. So if you can figure out the solutions to this cubic equation, that'll help us find out what x is. And we're looking for a real value here, so we're looking for the real solutions of this cubic equation. If we find out what those are, those are candidates for what x must be. Okay, so let's play around and see what the real solutions of this cubic equation are. So x is 2 actually works. One thing you can do is test out factors of 20. This is like the rational roots theorem. If we plug in 2, we'll get 2 cubed plus 6 times 2 minus 20. Um, which actually works out to zero. So two is a solution, and so x minus two is a factor of the left cubic. If we factor, we get x squared, and then a plus 10 as the constant term, and the only way to make things work out so that we have no x squared term um, is to put a 2x in there. So the other factor is x squared plus 2x plus 10. Now the thing with this quadratic that remains is that it has no real solutions. It's discriminant, the b squared minus 4ac part is actually negative. So that means the solutions are all complex, non-real numbers. So this has no real roots. So the only real solution x for that cubic equation that u minus v satisfies is x equals 2. And so that means that our expression that we had for this entire irrational looking number actually has to be two. Again, because it's a root of a cubic equation that only has one real root, and that real root is two. So this expression has to be two. Plug this into your calculator and actually check. It actually ends up being two. So a really cool, surprising result that uses a bunch of interesting techniques, including finding an equation that your expression actually satisfies, and then finding the roots of that equation in a different way.